Hello, this is Greg Prado, author of the books Take It Off, Kiss Truly Unmasked, as well as The Eric Carr Story, amongst many others. You're listening to the Shattered Out Loudcast with Tom and Zeus. Rock and roll! Oh boy. Here we go. Boy. Stop pressing the buttons. Star Simmons. Star? Stanley. Is that what he does? Stop shouting. Brady. Brady. He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh no, here come the kiss cards. Is that a positive thing? Okay. Alright. I'm gonna grab me a nice cold mellow meow. Why? Why do that to the fan? Stop it. Why? Because oh, fuck. You do? Hey, fucko! Do you like kiss? Settle down. Hello. Hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus, another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast. Episode 226. Kiss box set. Disc 5. We're finally there, Tom. We made it. That's right. Yep. Last, last disc of the box set. That's right. Yep. 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 That's yep. how it tells you how long we've been doing this show for. We made it through the box set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. It's good because then next year we can do an overall analysis of the box set. A little round table discussion. We like those. Yeah. 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 Uh, but before I get into it, I had a little story I wanted to share with you and our listeners because I think they find this stuff fascinating. Uh oh. Yeah. So I, 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 for a while there, I've had some health stuff going on. You know about it. I've talked to you about it. And yep. uh, so I'm doing a lot of tests and exams. So just ruling out a bunch of shit. Thankfully, all the ma- major scary things have been ruled out and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one of the last things I needed to do uh, was was a stool sample, Tom. Here we go. Why wasn't this a live cast episode? <laughs> this should have been part of the Patreon video chat. So uh, when I walked out, they give you like this like plastic like bucket with wings. So, yeah. like, I suppose you put it underneath the toilet and put the toilet down and shit in this bucket. <laughs> and then they of give all, you a couple of, of all the people to do that. And then Ugh. they give you two little plastic tubes. And as you unscrew the top, it's got a, like a built in plastic shovel. So you're supposed to <laughs> shit in the bucket and then go like scooping for gold in the bucket and put it in the test tube. You know what's what, what? What do you think's worse, you doing that or the doctor who has to receive that tube? Oh, and I'm not open there it yet. Up? Oh, I know. I'm not, I, I, I'm not I, there I know. yet. I know. I know. All right. All right. The <laughs> the amount of like self humiliation of like of taking the bucket out, putting it near the sink, taking unscrewing the top, <laughs> taking that built in <laughs> shovel, and scooping out. Pieces of shit, and then putting it in the test tube. It's like using then, like one of those old like wooden spoons when you'd eat like a hoodsie. And you yeah. scrape out like the hoodsie. Yeah, like, yes, exactly. <laughs> like, an ice, like an Italian ice. Like an Italian ice. And then I have to take like toilet paper, and I'd be like <laughs> cleaning off the side. <laughs> so when you screw in the top, <laughs> shit particles don't go everywhere. <laughs> It's 2023. This is the best way to do this. So I, I do that. I clean it <laughs> off and screw. Then they give you a little plastic bag in it. It's funny that it says biohazard on it. <laughs> I'm picturing myself walking in in a fucking hazmat suit going, here you go. Right, Last let, let, night's Taco Tuesdays. Okay, let me do my due diligence here and welcome new listeners. Okay. So I have to then, before I pick up my kid from school, I go to the, the, the fucking clinic place that you get your blood dork and lab. And I go in and I'm holding it in that bag with my, my phone and wallet trying to hide it so people don't see. Has he got tubes of shit in a plastic got, bag? Why has he got shit in his what? And I'm praying like it doesn't 
leak through the oh. <laughs> You should have sprayed it with fart spray and just ruined the entire <laughs> office. My, my favorite part is like you had to keep it refrigerated until oh. you brought it. Oh, Daddy, I'm hungry. Do we have any leftovers in the refrigerator? You got some fudge coals in the corner. <laughs> so, and then I have to wait, and they're like, yes, date of birth? Okay, I found you. What are you doing today? Oh, I'm dropping <laughs> this off. <laughs> oh, she's. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and she's like, oh, just put it there in the corner with the other ones. I'm like, oh, this might be where the party's at. Good times. <laughs> Drop it oh, off. Trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dude? That's fucking awesome. What the fuck? Well, did you get the results back yet? Well, I just dropped it off. I'm sure they're not really enthusiastic to be thumbing through people's shit. Some guys day. probably like, hey, Harry, we got bags of shit for you to look through. <laughs> How bad is that person's job? Yeah, that's pretty fucking bad. The like. It's not the doctor who like sees the results. It's the guy that has to like fucking put it through all the tests. Yeah, like the that tech- guy's like job. The, like the like the the, the fecal technician. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not the blood guy. <laughs> the blood guy gets fired. He gets put on the fecal fucking job. He's literally Mister Feces. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my day, Tom. Yeah, I did not have anything nearly as exciting as that. I'm sorry, I don't have any stories yes. like that. So no, I'm well, good. I'm glad to get to disc five now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I went to the bathroom regularly and where I'm supposed <laughs> to go today. So. Which reminds me, then I have that plastic fucking bucket. So I'm like, put her in that bucket. <laughs> I'm like, this bucket has shit in it. So you try to dump out what's much shit you have to the toilet. And then you're like, what do I do? I can't just throw it in the dumpster. It's going to fucking be sure you can. Out. Fuck them. It's a public dumpster. No, I had to fucking hose it down. Oh, it. God. <laughs> you, know what it is? This is, you, know, you know what this is? This is payback for that maintenance guy on the cruise ship who had to use that industrial cleaner to sanitize that bathroom. Oh, yep. fuck. That's right. Uh, it's nothing like seeing a bucket full of human shit. Like I said, welcome new listeners. We love oh. Kiss. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Okay. Anyway, uh, Tom, last week we had comedian extraordinaire uh, Russell Peters, the great yeah. Russell Peters on our show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the response we got from him is fucking incredible. People yep. loved it. The crowd seems the crowd to love it. Seems to love it. Yeah. yeah, he. Um, I think he surprised a lot of people that he wasn't giving generic answers about Kiss oh. and stuff. That he knows his Kiss shit. Yep. And uh, a lot of people that knew him knew he was going to fucking hit out of the park with his comedy, but didn't think he would knew that much about Kiss. Mm. And then there are others who just you know discovered some of his comedy and stuff. Yep. Uh, so we got a lot of good feedback on that. And yeah. We did a poll, right? Yeah. So the poll was tri- sometimes we have guest polls are tricky. So, I, I mean, we we knew what the results of this would be, but we did it anyways to try to get some comments and stuff. So the question was simply, you know, when we asked Russell what his favorite Kiss album was, he gave us ver- two very different answers. He gave us the Paul Stanley 78 solo album and he gave us music from The Elder. So we asked people, what's your favorite? We knew what the answer was going to be. You know, of course, it was obvious. Yeah, Paul Stanley got 74% of the vote. 26% of you dorks like the elder, uh, which is fine. Um, let's see. Our buddy Wally Vidal. It, it's great. He likes the elder. I don't appreciate the unmasked slander. Oh, yeah, I didn't understand tell- his comment. Then he came back and I was, he's like, said something about REM. And I'm like, dude, like people don't get this shit. Like it's uh, no, no, no. What, mean, he was, you, what, what I know. I understood was, later. Oh, I understand okay, later, okay. but I'm just okay. saying in general, like, it, it, People are really offended. If you like something that really moves you and like, and you like it, yeah, fucking God bless you. Take the, you know, who cares? We're missing out. If it does so much, it gives you so much pleasure, then we're missing out. Yeah. Right. Right. It, right. I don't need to fucking bag on you all day because you like Hearts' second album. You know. Well. Okay, Welcome great. That, that, that's the internet for you. Fuck and, and yeah, and that's just it. And so some people get all offended 
if you don't like unmasked as much as you like that, like who cares? I get offended because I like unmasked. Yeah. Yeah, Wally. Fucking stupid. Uh, stupid. Let's see. Maybe they're stupid. Greg Pinhead says, I've really come around on the elder recently, but Paul Solo is an all time record for me, with the exception of Hold Me, Touch Me. I love every song. Yes, I think most people agree with that one. Yes. Uh let's see what some people have to say about Russell's episode itself here on Twitter. Similar to what I was saying, Tom. Yeah, go ahead. Like you can say fucking Paul's blows away the elder and still love the elder. Yeah, of course. Right? It doesn't yeah, yeah. mean anything like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? Ah, uh, well, Jesus that's fucking that, that, people. That's the kiss tard world. That's actually oh, the internet God, world. God, there's just so many fucking idiots like that. Yes. It's fucking annoying. Fuck them. Solar Garlic says, absolutely amazing episode. Definitely a one of us vibe. And now I recall that intro into I Stole Your Love When It Drops is loud and sudden. Getting Gene to react to the I joke was hilarious. Love the conversation and kiss unity this podcast yields. That's a great comment from Solar Garlic. Thy Kingdom Come says, I watched Russell at my local casino and he absolutely killed it. And then some comments about some stuff I don't really really feel like getting into right now because I don't trust people's response to it. But Thy Kingdom Come, thank you for your comment. And uh, that's Twitter. What do you got, Zeus, on your end of the book of face? Yeah, over on our Loudcast uh, Facebook page. Lee Graham says, anyone who digs got love for sale and music from the elder is cool with me. Nice. That's cool. Yes. What is his second favorite album? I can't hear what he says because T and Z reacted to his for- first choice, Paul Stanley. What is this fucking Jericho's burner account? Oh, keep it quiet. Okay, well, first of all, for, for, first of all, just for the record, I don't even know who made that comment. Just for the record, I went back and listened to the episode. You can absolutely clearly say he says the elder. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure. Mario like, Aguilera the third. No, I think no Mario. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. But I, I mean, yeah, I, if you missed that, I I'm, I apologize. But sorry, we we react organically to to guests. So yeah, too bad. Uh, Adam Nirenberg. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm just telling everybody to fuck off. <laughs> Not you, Mario. Oh, there's plenty of fucking people that listen and whatever that I have no problem saying and thinking, fuck off. Oh, I agree. Please. You know, oh, yep. oh because I listen to you, I can fucking be, oh, shut the fuck up. Oh, there's some people out there who think because they listen to us that they, or, or, or like, or comment every week or yeah. become a Patreon member. Oh, that gives me exclusive right to say, go fuck yourself, bozo. When people want to fucking listen to you, then fucking say something. Or if you have a podcast and I comment on your shit, I'll do that. But you guess what? You don't, and I won't listen anyway. So fuck off. Yeah, welcome, new listeners. God, we love our audience. Well, most of the, you guys are cool. <laughs> Uh, and I think the people know who I'm talking about. Yeah. If the, you think the crowd you, seems it, to love it's, it. It's fucking you, Bozo. Fuck <laughs> off. Fucking goon. <laughs> you fucking dipshit. Yeah, like the old saying goes, if you're, if you're, like the old saying goes, if you're not sure who we're talking about, we're talking about you. <laughs> yeah. You, or, <laughs> <laughs> fucking nobody comments on your shit and you think you're fucking clever. Adam Nirenberg, the best. I am sitting drinking my coffee, and you guys only made me spit out my coffee. All right. Telling Bob Ezrin that he loves the elder, and Bob saying, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you learned something new. Peter North is Canadian. He has the best freaking story. This was a home run. Yeah, Agreed. Thank you. Russell was yeah. amazing. Our buddy Jack Pinacchio. Ooh. I was crying from laughter at his Paul's impression about more rumors. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And his impression was fucking spot on. <laughs> that was good. Oh, I heard him do a Paul fucking impression. I'll tell you, it was great. Yep. Over on our loud casters, Paul Stanley's uh, favorite. <laughs> Paul Stanley's favorite loud caster, Tim Bream. Think of Stanley here, people, and listen. Oh God. This episode was great and hilarious. Loved it, especially of his loathing of fake Fraley. And oh. Paul's comments of more, more room as he's gay. Gold. I, I'm like, I, I thought myself, oh yep. shit, Tim is gonna love this stuff. Yeah, me you too. But guys, Tim isn't for everybody, but he's one of us. He has his he's like 
somewhere on the crazy side of loudcasters, but he's he's okay with us, and we uh and we appreciate him for what he does. Sometimes it's a little too much, but we liked him. Oh yeah, of course. The handsome Tony Musalam. Oh yeah, we love Tony too. We do. Well, yeah, we do. Love Russell. Been a fan for years. Looking forward to checking out this episode. Uh, Tony does the intro music to album review crew. It occurred to me to say it now because we never say it on our show. So thank you for that, Tony. Over on our Instagram, Tom. uh, We've got a couple comedians think they're funny. Uh, Courtney Cronin, Dold, Kulik, Simmons, Tweed, fucking... uh, Millhouse Nixon, uh, Dold. <laughs> Great episode, guys. Fellow comedian Craig Gass says, I'm Craig Gass, and I prove this podcast. Nice. Pete Egg 75 says, laughing my ass off. I think this is your comment, Tom. Ace with floaties in the pool. <laughs> I was waiting for Martin Short SNL. I'm not a strong swimmer bit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Over on our U. YouTube page. Devin Dungan, always words of encouragement. Thank you, brother. Great episode. Thank you. Mm-hmm. This is good. This is, see, this is what happens when we give Tim some love. Oh, no. Uh, somebody named Heidi writes, love Tom and Zeus, but irrelevant guests. Uh, I take Sink and Stanley all over this guy. Like, what the fuck is irrelevant guest? You got one of the world's biggest, most popular stand up comedians in any. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry we didn't get fucking Tim's thought about Lips Magoo, whatever the fuck his name is. Thoughts on Paul Stanley lip syncing. Sorry. Well, we'll have him next week to talk about Stool Station. <laughs> or, 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 or Zeus's Stool Sample. Yeah, Stool Sample. <laughs> or, or Mr. Greed. Oh. <laughs> God, Greed Simmons. Have you heard his that thing he did with Greed? Don't Mr. stop and cover Greed. it. Don't encourage him anymore. He's getting too much airtime. Actually, I, but it's actually quite funny. They call him Mr. Greed. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> the fucking amount of time. The amount of time poor Tim puts into this thing. God bless him. Oh, man. Mr. Antonio 2005. We are the only ones that understand this group at the 30 minute mark was one of the most poetic lines in the history of this show. In my opinion, most kiss fans at some point in their journey had to defend the band and the brand to those who don't understand. Great job. Russell was hilarious. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Antonio huh. 2005. We always love what you uh, have to say. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I give it over to you, brother. All right, let's wrap it up with a few emails here. We got one from our buddy Mike H. He writes, me, knows who Russell Peters is, likes Russell Peters, had no idea Russell Peters is a kiss geek, loves Russell Peters. Also me, had no clue that Engelbert Humperdinck is Indian. I didn't either. Neither did I. Nope. Uh, a good friend, Wes Beach, another great episode, had me laughing out loud, and I think you have the title of Paul's next solo album, more rumors. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would mistakenly buy it thinking it was a new Fleetwood Mac record. Your interview just proves you never know who's a Kiss fan. Hope you have Russell on again. His stories were priceless. Rock on. Tom, I agree with that. I, I mean, I think it's a running thing for us. I, I love getting people yeah. from all spectrums that yeah. are Kiss fans and hearing from them. Yep. It's awesome. Wrap up emails here with one from our good buddy LP Sterlino. Oh, no. Best episode ever. Wow. I rarely comment after episodes anymore, but after this one, I have to tell you, the latest episode with Russell Peters had me absolutely dying. I couldn't get enough of the insights into Kiss. The guy is a total Kiss tard. In fact, I'd say he knows just as much about the band as any fan out there. Him being such a fan and knowing them personally is a deadly combo. I might say he has given me the biggest Kiss-related laughs ever this episode. What really impressed me was how much he knew about the members and their personalities. He gave me a bigger insight into Kiss than some of the people I've interviewed who've actually worked with them. And his thoughts on the Elder, spot on. 
The whole conversation was so natural and easygoing. Felt like I was just hanging out with a group of friends talking about our favorite band as usual with you two. It wasn't forced or wooden like some other podcasts tend to be. And this made for one of the most entertaining listens I've had in a long time. I know the guy is obviously busy, but he had real chemistry with you two and it really worked. He was comfortable enough to just provide gold after gold because you two were getting the good stuff. I have to admit, I don't know how you're ever going to top this episode. It was just too good. But at the same time, I can't wait to see what you have in store for us next. We love LP Sterlino. He's a friggin' god in our Loudcasters group. And he's right. We don't get a lot of emails from him. But uh, Sterlino, love you, buddy. Thank you for the, for those uh, kind words. And we're going to pass it back to Zeus for the rest of our feedback. Yeah, I got one more post I want to read. And this is off our Facebook page. This is from Ronnie Bacharski. Another home run episode, dudes. I didn't even know who Russell Peters was. He had me pissing myself with some of the stories and his honest take on members and different aspects of the band. My favorite part of your show is that there isn't any glad handling and ball gargling regarding Kiss and its members. That's what puts you guys above and beyond the other Kiss podcasts. It's refreshing when you even your guests are the same way, unfeathered, unfiltered. He even wasn't afraid to call it the fact that Paul's voice currently, even on track, sounds like somebody shitting through a screen door. I'm a new <laughs> fan of his. Keep up the good work. Well, Ronnie, we're a fan of yours, and we're a fan of that post. So thank you, and you are comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. We're going to be watching you. <laughs> Awesome. Love it, buddy. Thank you. Kind words. Appreciate that very much. Yeah. And what we do next, Tom, is we go over to Patreon. Patreon is where people can subscribe and uh, receive some perks, some merch, some involvement in the show, some video chats, and uh, and more. We do that often with our Patreon members, and we get their involvement, and it's a fun fucking group. We have our own little private group talks. We have uh, uh, a lot of <laughs> interesting thoughts that go back and forth. And the album review crew pick from Patreon is coming up next. So mm-hmm. if you want to get involved in that, you got to join Patreon. And if you do, it's a big help to us. As we always say, what's the best way to help and contribute to the show and continue to hear Shout It Out Loudcast? Become a Patreon member. And when you do, you get some perks from us, involvement in the show, and you help us out tremendously. We always want to thank our Patreon family members and uh, appreciate what they do and all the help and generosity they give us. And please, if you're interested... You go to our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com. Right on the landing page, you'll see a button for Patreon. Click on that. There are four easy tiers you can subscribe to. If you do, we'll thank you, and we'll appreciate and give you that shout-out. And we know you'll have a great time and be part of the Patreon Loudcaster family. So thank you, Patreon members. Yes, Patreon, you guys rock. So appreciate for everything that you do. Uh, we're extremely grateful for everything and your contributions and your support. So love you guys. Thank you. And if you're interested, like Zeus said, check us out at patreon.com or download the app and search for us and take a look and please become a member. Yeah, Tom, what we do next is we go to Kiss World and talk about what's going on there. Anything interesting there? Mm, well, they're in the middle of their tour, but what really got everybody's attention today on uh, Wednesday, May 31st, is that KISS announced a show in Dubai. And the comments did not let people down. What the fuck are you doing, KISS? Wow. Talk about going to your corporate masters. That's Dubai hooking them up and making it impossible for them to say no. But like, there's nobody in Dubai going, but, but we need to have Kiss back. There's no said, groundswell for them. Just announced the final Dubai show. Dude, do you have any announcement about the Dubai package from three years ago? I mean, I can't believe that they have the balls to go back to Dubai and encourage people. Like it, yeah, what is the ratio on fans 
that go their mind immediately goes to the D- Dubai DVD fucking fiasco. Everybody versus, versus oh, excited! There's another Dubai concert. Exactly. Every That's fucking so comment funny. almost was like, "Yeah, where's my shit?" They should have added that quietly. What are they going to sell people out? The people from uh, Kansas going to buy a ticket to go see them in Dubai? Yeah, I mean, people were making jokes, including me, maybe saying like, yeah, maybe they're going to record this one and then sell the DVDs for this one. Like, what the fuck, dude? That's what Doc meant when he's going to make it up to the fans, right? Here's a new show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Australia's got one final show. We t- I think we may have talked about that, so that's exciting. They got Weezer opening up for them. Ugh, the fuck is that? Yeah, but that's a big artist, though. No, 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 I know. Yeah, no, the that's... Kiss- that- to have open up, that's a big artist. No, you're right. No, you're right. We bitch about their opening act, so maybe that's a sign that maybe when they come back here, they'll do something, but I'm not holding up yeah, my right. for anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was one thing that was funny. I think our Australian buddy, Jack Panacchio, uh, mentioned something when I think Kiss was on Australian News or something like that, doing an interview, promoting the show, and on uh, one of the on-screen things, you know, they had like Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, and they had Eric Carr. Oh, and, no. and, yeah, exactly. Yikes. No. Who the fuck is running the show here? You know what I mean? Just bad. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Um, fuck yeah, it. They- Let him show him a picture of Peter Chris for all I care. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's true. Um, yeah, so let's see. Hey, they Tom, st- am I in that video, too? Because <laughs> if they put me in that video, then I, I need to talk to Laura about getting paid for it. I need some. I need some royalties. Going to be on Australian TV. What time is it in Australia, anyways? Hey, Gene, are we going to do the Don Lane show again? <laughs> I remember he used to have a nice big box of cashews there that I used to really enjoy when I would sit down and have some boxed wine with him. <laughs> well, next week they go to Europe and they start their European tour. They kick that off in Birmingham. Uh, and then they're there for a while. So um, yeah, other I than we, oh yeah, Tom, I think we forgot to mention that the fucking first show got canceled. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Last week we forgot to mention that. Everyone's like, oh yeah, logistics. We're like, that's ain't fucking logistics. That people ain't buying tickets. Don't be logistics. Huh? Yeah. We sold half of our tickets. Right. Exactly. Like, what are you? doing it, it's, it's the same set list you've been around how many times you're not gonna fucking obviously intrigue people if the people that went the last time that thought it was the last time are pissed off at you they're not going I, again i just think it's hilarious every time we turn around like just added new show but like, what stop adding shows are they at what? the 50 mark because i don't think they were at 50 when they announced i don't, the I last don't I, i'll shows. be i'll be honest i don't even count anymore i don't know what number they are i don't know i don't know but <laughs> Does it count my concerts do in Albany, New York? <laughs> yeah, you, oh, forget it. I was just going to forget it. Nope. Uh, <laughs> that, that's Kiss World. So, yeah, that's about it for now. All right, Tom, give me a second while I go grab myself some new pair of skinny jeans. The last one I had has some skid marks left over from the 78 tour. All right, well, we're back, and ah, God, what a mess. I had to help Ace because he heard you talking about your uh, stool sample thing, and he wanted to give it a try, but the problem was he just took a shit in his hotel trash barrel and just thought that was going to be good enough. It just didn't work out, so I had to help him clean that up. But what are you hey, talking was- about? You said as long as it's a plastic bag, it's suitable. I just took a fucking armadillo shit in a bucket. I don't know. I hope I hope they can figure out what's wrong with my stomach because I've been shitting myself for the last couple of weeks. I think it's all these fucking Cheetos and cashews and mellow yellow I've been drinking. The combination's like a fucking eight ball from the fucking 70s. We're never going to get another listener. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> sure, I'll do. Sure, I'll do your show. No problem. Can you, you pl- give, can, can you submit some clips and show me what you guys talk about? <laughs> oh. All right, Tom, we're on to disc five, the last disc of the Kiss box set. Yes, um, indeed. We broke down the previous four. We ranked them. And what we usually do is we talk a little bit about the cover. We talk about the tracks, what was picked. And then mm-hmm. we break down some of the actual singles or the unique tracks that mm-hmm. are part of that specific disc yep. disc five starts on uh, 92 to 99 so it's the revenge era you know reunion all that good stuff so uh 92 to 99 is what the cover of the disc says for the time frame of this bad boy 
Yeah, and let's start as we usually do with the uh, cover, which Love is it. pretty badass. It's fucking incredible! This is like this would this would be a sick fucking poster. Yeah, it's from the reunion tour. It's got the uh, the big giant rafter gear thing with the flames and Gene up top doing his uh, God of Thunder stuff. It looks just amazing. Very very awesome cover. Yeah, his hand is in the air. The fire's yep. going off. Yep. And you're like, where the fuck? I don't get this. Hold on. Wait, Gene. You, they got the TV screen behind them. Yep. Uh, you know, Paul, uh, Paul and Ace in 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 uh you know form where it looks like they're shaking, almost like they're doing the fucking deuce the, dance. The deuce dance, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. You can barely see Peter back. You see the big amps, and then you yep. see fucking fire and these huge thing up top, and then there's Gene with his arm raised on yeah. doing you know, God of Thunder. It's a great picture. Really, very, really awesome. Yep. The back. Now, the previous four had each member in makeup, original member. Yeah. The I back like, of I, this I like one. This. I like this. Has Eric Carr in the Fox makeup. Yeah. I think this is a really nice tribute. Um, this is very cool. And he's also on the inside when you remove the disc from the from the case. Um, yeah. I, it's, I think it's a really nice tribute, and I like how they have him in makeup. I think that's really unique, so that was very cool of them to do that. Yeah, they, the opening, if you open up the CD here, you've got the four yep. members, Peter, Ace, on the sides, and then Gene and Eric, uh, Gene and Paul, excuse me, in the middle. Yep. Uh, the back is the uh, unplugged part, mm -hmm. uh, a Revenge-era photo as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool pictures. Very cool. Very cool packaging. I mean, this is obviously like an, an era that none of us will ever forget. I mean, we were all lucky enough to be alive when, and, and uh, you know, aware and old enough to see when, when this was, when, when all of this happened. So I think that's kind of why this is a little bit extra yeah, cool for us. I feel like this is a time where also when they were doing covers and things, mm -hmm. they knew what the people wanted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Exactly. Yep. This yep. isn't throwing fucking Kiss Virginia Beach at you. Right, exactly. Um, these guys yeah. knew what we wanted, and the fact that they put Eric in here shows that you know, you know, they actually put some thought into this stuff. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought it was very well done. I th the packaging is very, very cool. And, and again, I've said it already, but I think honoring Eric was very cool. Yep. Yeah. Um, Tom. So let's go to the tracks. Okay. So as as you mentioned, it's ninety two ninety nine. So there, you're gonna get basically revenge yep so you knew they were going to throw in and these are the tracks from revenge that are on it four of them god gave rock and roll unholy domino every time i look at you you knew you though you'll definitely going to get god gave rock and roll to you they love that fucking track mm -hmm. yeah right? this uh, yeah i'll <sighs> i'm not going to say i'm unhappy i mean we got a demo version of domino which we'll talk about in a minute but it's weird, like, like, like nothing from a live three. So no, no, no live version of unholy or anything. Um, I don't I mean, like you said, unholy and God gave rock and roll to you. I get it. But every time I look at you, it just seems like that's kind of like a seems kind of forced by them. Domino, the demo, I get it's unique. It's different. Domino was a hit. Let's give you something different. Yeah. Here's a demo version. Yeah. So let's yeah. start at the beginning, though. God gave rock and roll to you. I think this is a way. Maybe it's just me. This is a way for them to put Eric on this disc yep. five. Absolutely. And I love it. Right. Yep. I, I his agree. Vocals are on this. That's yep. it. That yep. He wasn't playing on it. Eric Singer played on it, but maybe that's a way of like, okay, we'll, you know, we'll honor Eric. We'll make him the fucking featured member on disc five. And yep. then uh, they put one song there, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unholy. They, it's not the actual track from revenge. Correct. Yeah, it's got the the edited intro. Um, it kind of goes right into the song because I, I I love the drawn out kind of menacing intro on the on the on the Revenge album itself. So this just has like a little bit of the edited intro. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, off the top, if you're thinking you're going to go a couple tracks from Revenge, I would assume those are the first two tracks they're going to take. Totally. Those, yeah. Those have been concert staples for a while and things mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Then. This is where it gets tricky. Okay, they want to put a demo in, right? I don't have a problem with them putting a demo of some. And also, Not at all. I like the demo version of Domino. It's actually pretty good. It sounds like Gene's band that we just saw in Vegas, like a it fucking does. raw, stripped down version of this song. I know the lyrics yeah. are different. Yeah, the so first if you guys want to hear different. something. Yeah, yeah, they're very different. And even the middle, and when she bends over, 
I forget. Man. That's all different too. Yep. There's a lot of different lyrics on that, so I don't mind that. No. Um, every time I look at you, oh, come on, dude. We've talked about this a million times. This is Paul trying to yep. make this a hit. Yep. I don't understand. You got. I. I says. I'm just going to say it again, and that's because I love Alive Three so much. Why not give us Unholy from Alive Three? Or, or God gave rock and roll to you for, well, I mean, I know you're not going to do that because Eric played, but Eric, I, I just think some representation of that live album should have been on this. Um, there's no reason why they couldn't have done that, but that, that would probably be my only complaint with the revenge selections. I'm going to make this a hit no matter what. Let's put it on unplug. That didn't work. Let's put it on the box set. Didn't, that didn't work. work. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I mean, I've said before, I, li- I like the song. I think it's a nice ballad. I mean, it's not, it's not for, it's not forever and it never will be, but I like it. I just want to should have been there. That's my oh, yeah. opinion. Or take it off or something like yep. that. But yep. whatever. Yep. Um, yep. Then they go to the unplugged. Mm-hmm. So they pick four tracks from unplugged. Mm-hmm. Coming home. Got to choose. I still love you. Nothing to lose. Just hear me out on this, Tom. Mm-hmm. Coming home makes sense because I think people really fell in love with that version and them mm-hmm. opening up unplugged because it was so random. And coming yes. home was never played before. Yep. Agreed. It was never around. And then playing it as the opener for Unplugged mm-hmm. made it gave it something. So I I see that. And it was the that, f- open and it was the opening track to the un- you kind of have to have it on there. Yeah. Yeah. And it just became uh popular from that yep. album. Then you go to Got to Choose. Now I ain't myself, I bought the Japanese version. So most people do not have this version of this song. I have the Japanese version where it does have got to choose on it. Mm-hmm. So I see why they put it on there for people. I get it from that perspective, but from an actual quality, no, yeah, yeah. quality song perspective. No, first of all, it's another song from a heart of an hell. There's, there's no need. Yeah, I, I, I see. But, they, you know, they're adding things in there that you wouldn't normally get. And I it's get a it. good way. Yep. Like, oh, I can't find the Japanese version in the 90s. Whenever this is. Yep. Out. I- like, oh, so I just buy the box set. It's there. Perfect. Yep. So that works out. I Still Love You is, I would say, a highlight of the Unplugged album of Paul. Again, patting himself on the back. Everybody loves and plays his. his he does a great performance. The song, he does a great job. I still would say, like, it's, you know, the song's okay for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. And because he does a just, fantastic yeah. job. Yeah. Like, okay. I think this is just another way. Listen to how good I used to be. You would, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's all this is. This is Paul flexing. Uh, it's all the song's okay, but I mean, this is like a six minute version of the song or whatever. It's like, eh, and then it's, it's it's not bad. It's just give me something. Give me like show no something or two thousand man or so one of the, you know something like that or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just for me it's. Whatever, I, there's no need, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's Paul to pat himself on the back. Uh, nothing to lose. Now, I like nothing to lose live. I love Peter coming in and all that stuff. It's got too much Eric Singer in this song. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to hear unplug, I'm excuse me. If I'm going to hear nothing to lose, I want the alive version, mm-hmm. not this. I, yeah, I think the glaring omission here, and I cannot believe it's not on this. Is rock and roll all night. Now I know rock and roll all night from another album is on this. We'll get to that. It gets the last track on the C. But how do you not have all the original members come out? Everybody's taking turns singing like that. That needs to be on here. That may Nothing, be my favorite version of rock and roll. I, I agree. Nothing to lose is great. I love that. But that no. If they did, if they left rock and roll all night off of this, so that they can put it on. The song at the end of this disc that we'll eventually get to, I think that's a terrible decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's always funny. I like to say it's like, how many versions of Rock and Roll Night do we all have? There's fucking two versions of it on the box set already. But that's but at least the the unplugged one is is unique and creative and it's special. You know, it's it's not just another concert recording. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know. It's just what the I know now. They go into Carnival of Souls. Fuck this. You go first. I got a lot to say about this bullshit. Only two songs. <sighs> Childhood's End and I Will Be There. If that's not fucking Paul saying this is the classic. I wrote this beautiful song about my son, Evan. 
we need to put it in. Like, bullshit. That song sucks. <laughs> we have not, we have not, we have not reviewed Carnival of Souls yet, but I've made many comments over the years about how much I love the album. These are probably two of the worst songs on the album. How the fuck do you not have Jungle, Master and Slave? So, uh, come on. This is a terrible representation Eight? of this album. Terrible. Yeah. Ter- and, and you're so right. I will be there. No offense. I don't give a fuck if you wrote it about your son. The song is terrible. These are Paul Pat in the back selections. You know I will you- be there every time I look at you and I still love you. No reason they should be there. Here's what they, you know what, if you really wanted to impress me. Now, we love Bruce Kulik. We've had him on the show. We hung out with him in Vegas. I'm not going to say I'm a huge fan of the song, but if you want to do something unique and representative, put I Walk Alone on here. That's that, that. Uh, that's it's better than I will be that you got Bruce's vocals. He loves that song. Throw him a bone. But come on, terrible selection here from Carnival of Souls. If you did that, then you would have almost every member represented. Which would be spot. pretty friggin' awesome. Yes. I agree with you on yes. that. Yes. Childhood End does have that long, drawn out coda. Which is cool. It. Which is cool. Yeah. So it right. is a little bit different version of the song. So I'll yeah. give it that. And yep. I don't think it's a bad song for Gene. Okay. He may have better selections, but that's it. I will be there. Brutal. Oh, come on. Terrible selection. Just, Terrible selection. That is all ego. Yep. That is all ego. Yep. I agree. Now let's go into uh cycle circus selection, Tom. There are four songs from there. The title track into the void within. And I pledge allegiance, Tom. Woohoo. Now, I, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised with this selection. I I don't mind the t- the title track. I know you fucking hate it. Into the Void, it's cool. It's ace. Within, probably the best Gene song on the album. And I've on I absolutely love. I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and roll. So I am not a huge fan of the Psycho Circus album. So this is cool that these are the tracks. I don't know if you need to have four of them, but I'm not going to argue with these four. I think this is a I think this is a nice selection for me. See, I would definitely get rid of I Pledge Allegiance and I would have put Raise Your Glasses. They could have, okay. if they showed some love to that song, that song could have been a hit. You're right. I think it's well written. It, it deserves a lot more fucking love. And Paul hits it out of the park on that one. I yeah. love Within. I Me think too. that's a great song by Gene. And they do it without the intro. Into the Void? Yeah, but let's put an ace track on there. Something different, right? Yep. I agree. You're, they could have even put in your face, which would have made more sense. Mm-hmm. The other ace track that's not on this version of Cycle Circus, but on, I think, the Japanese version, right? Yep. I, uh, I believe so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then Cycle Circus is without the intro. How about without the song? That'd be better. I don't understand. Why? <laughs> is this supposed to be a plus for the listeners? So his Unholy without the intro, his Within without the intro, his Psycho Circus without the intro. What, what, I don't, what are you doing? <laughs> but his childhood's <laughs> end, but his childhood's end with a five minute outro. <laughs> like, we, that, we want that? I don't know. Yeah, it's, I it's get weird. it. Sometimes for like radio edits, and the only thing you know of Detroit right. Rock City is yeah. without the car, and then right. you have the one with the car shit going on in the beginning. I get yeah. that. You no, I know. Get I know. Long. Like if you having a party and you having shit in the background, and you just want to hear the guy starting up his fucking car, and listening to shit, you know. Yeah. Or if you have, or if you're having a party and you want to hear Psycho Circus to get everybody to leave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, Tom. Here comes your Ugh. favorite part. From speaking the of st- speaking of stool samples, <laughs> from Detroit Rock City, nothing can keep me from you. Dude, this is not. Nothing can keep me from playing this song. This is not. I don't want to miss a thing from Armageddon by fucking Aerosmith. This is what you're trying to do. It's a terrible song. It rolls the credits at the end of the movie, so at least you don't have to hear it because that's it. It's at the end of the movie. But he tried Diane Warren. I can do this, dude. No one fucking cares at this point. It's terrible. Let's make it a hit again. No, this has got. Paul self indulgence all over this bucket. Totally. Album. You're right. This is right. like a Paul disc right here. It's like, yeah. these are going to be hits. <laughs> no, they're not. They're all bad. <laughs> it's just not good. 
Yeah. When I lose my voice and my face becomes all crooked, I'm going to play these songs over and remind people how good I used to be. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What <laughs> the fuck, Paul? Come on. Get Come your on. shit together. Fucking Stanley. Let's go. All right, Tom, we get to something that we I know we both love. And yep. that's the previously unreleased It's My Life. Yes. Nice surprise to see this. Yes, this was awesome. Especially when it, when this box set came out in 2001. Because back then, you're like, what the fuck is this? Oh, my God, it's got Ace in it, too? Like, this is this is really cool. Yeah, I didn't we, have we, the we talk- WOW album. I don't know this existed. No. We've obviously had West Beach on the show talking about its previous incarnation in the early 80s. It's my life. There's a demo of it, all that shit. I think it eventually became on Creatures of the Night box set, if I'm not mistaken. and. This is the best version. This, him and Gene, oh, fucking knock out of the park. And I just think it's funny. I remember when we did our the album review for Psycho Circus, we just kept saying, how the fuck did this song not make the album, but We Are One makes it, or whatever, <laughs> like, or, you know, like, whatever. It's like, come on. This yeah. is such a good song. Absolutely. And that's why I don't want any good Gene songs on this album. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you're probably right. <sighs> No, then the version go. of Shout It Out Loud from Greatest Kiss, the live version, which used to be our opening and closing theme, I believe, uh, on this show. Uh, the live version of that, because we needed that. Oh, I don't know. I know Greatest Kiss started becoming like, like, oh, the band is back together. Here's the box set. Here's Greatest Kiss with the original member. Like They started to try to release new, uh, new stuff of the old band. So they're like, oh, greatest uh, kiss that could be our new double platinum. And here's one of the live versions from that. So, I mean, wow. I, I kind of get it in a way because they are trying to push. At the time, there was no there was no live album for the 96 reunion. And <clears throat> greatest kiss is its own thing. So that let's throw this on here. But shout it out loud. Come on. Ugh, God. Yeah. And then by the way, end- by the way, by the way, we do like kiss the band. <laughs> we, we 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 do like them, yeah. and then we have the at the time it was unreleased, but it eventually became on the Alive Millennium concert, another yeah. live version of Rock and Roll All Night because we, you know we need another one. I, but again, I'll 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 excuse them a little bit because when the box set came out in two thousand one, this was on this was unavailable. So that uh, again, do you need Rock and Roll All Night? No, but. I get it at the time, but now since the Millennium Concert is available and you can get it, it's like, eh, the, the novelty is kind of gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, again, I would, I see, I don't know, because at the time you couldn't get this, but you could get Rock and Roll All Night unplugged on Unplugged. So this would be, you know, something hmm. different. So I get why they put this on instead of Rock and Roll All Night Unplugged. I mean, I do too. Uh, right. Exactly. They want to give, because the, 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 the whole point of the box set, or would like to think that the whole point of the box is to give people things that they've never had before demos or unreleased tracks. And at the time this was unreleased. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. 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 So Tom, that's the box set disc Mm. five, Mm. you know, so we talked about already what we would have put instead for these tracks. What we do next is we rank what was, previously like the unique tracks yeah and so something unique on this would be the domino demo version um it's my life and nothing can keep me from you i think we can go with that um because what? the two live versions we don't need to do that if you want to do it we can no nope. you no nope. we'll just do those three so yeah so nothing can keep me from you domino demo and it's my life how do you rank them Oh, definitely. It's my life. It's my life is not even close to being number one. And then Domino the demo and wh- whatever the bottom of the barrel is, is that's where nothing can keep me from you goes. Tom, I agree with you 1000%. Yeah. Easy, that's how easy. I have it. It's my yep. life. Domino on uh, demo. And then nothing can keep me is number three. Yep. Without now, a doubt. We've ranked these box sets before. So previously we ranked them tom we had the same fucking ranking okay we had disc two as number one disc three 
as the second best, mm-hmm. disc one as the third best, and disc four as the fourth best. Okay. How are you ranking now disc five if you had to put it in here? Let's see. Um it it, it pains me to say this, like it really does, but I mean, I love Revenge. I love Unplugged, but there's a ton of shit on this, and I love this box set. This is going last. Really? Yeah, this is going last. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I look at it this way, Tom. Um, I like the Unplugged stuff, Lick It Up era, uh, the songs off of that. But yep. the demo... Ain't That Peculiar is not as good as the demo from Domino. The extra track, which would be um, Time Traveler. Paul Stanley in the Temple of Doom. (laughs) Yeah. Versus It's My Life is not even fucking close. So, and the other songs that are on here aren't bad. So I'm going to just put disc five just above four. Okay, I, I could say, and I and I would probably, I'm not going to fight you on that because that's where I was going to go because I I do love the unplugged and I do like unholy, but nothing can keep me from you and 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 some of the other like those two live tracks that I don't need like I could see myself in the old days of throwing in a CD. I think I love disc four. I mean it's I, I mean it's got I love I, them I, all, but I, I right would right right five. Right. Right. I mean, it's got, it's got hell or high water. It's got silver spoon. Again, yes, I know those are already studio tracks on the albums, but I'm saying back when this came out before streaming, if you wanted to throw a CD in, I thought th- this was a good sample of that, of that era of the band. Whereas I know they tried to give us a good sample of the band for disc five, but I just think, first of all, for 18 songs, there's a lot of shit that should have either been replaced or cut out altogether on the disc, in my opinion. So yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, give it all you can take and fucking crazy nights. I know. No, you're right. You're right. And, uh, you know, there's just <laughs> whatever. Anyways, uh, that's the box set. What we'll do probably next year, we'll get around to, we'll just do a fucking complete breakdown, reevaluate our selections and talk about the box set as a whole. Yep, but for I now, agree. we finally finished box set disc five. My God. And we're done with the box set. So, all right. Well, Tom, what we do next is we go to question of the week. You got one? Of course. We always have questions. And we always like to remind people, if you want to be our question of the week, you can please email us, shoutoutloudcast.com. Send us a message on our social media. Uh, please, we do a question every week, and we love we love to get people to interact with us. All right, now question of the week comes from Ryan Michael Scott, Spencer Cook, Cronin Dole, Rodham <laughs> Clinton, Milhouse Nixon, Chaim Witz, Stanley Eisen. <laughs> With you guys just posting the photos of meeting Gene in the band, and after listening to the episode, I've been wondering, would you do an event like this hosted by Paul Stanley? I'm guessing you would 100%. But still curious how you would both approach him with questions you're asked, what statements you'd say. With Gene's personality, events are absolutely incredible. With Paul, I think it would be very different. Hope to hear your thoughts on this. Now, we did comment jokingly on what it would be like, but we didn't really get into it. So we'll give we'll give your question week a couple of minutes of our thoughts here, Zeus. What do you think? Absolutely not. First of all, the amount of money we spent. In order to do a Paul event like that, we'd either have to buy a guitar Mm -hmm. or buy one of his fucking shit paintings. The amount of time you get with him is like 10, 15 minutes. We got way more than that for the money we spent on Gene. Way more than that. Mm -hmm. Also, there's nobody else going to be there. We knew Gene would have a band and we were kind of hoping and we were right that other people would be there. And it was. Also, Paul isn't as personable as Gene. I it, He doesn't make me want to give him money. <laughs> Gene does. Um, Paul makes me want to regret giving him money because he doesn't seem like he's appreciative unless you're kissing his ass about his fucking artwork. Hmm. Um, and I don't give a fuck about art. 
And I don't, I'm not a guitar player, so I don't want one of his fucking dumb guitars. I wanted an event where I can hang out and talk with him like we did with Gene and have a fun time. That ain't happening with Paul. So, no, I wouldn't do it. Personally, I wouldn't. For the amount of money we spent, no, not even close. Uh, I'll keep an open mind here, and I would have to see the details of the event. Obviously, cost. Obviously, what is the event entail? Um, is it similar to Jeans? Do you get a meet and greet? Do you get a dinner? Is there a band? Is there something going on? Or is this going to be? Because we talked about this. Jeans event was literally for the fans. In all, in all yeah. series, it was for the fans. If Paul's event is for Paul, where it's about his art and it's about Soul Station, and he's going to serve everybody his orange juice pasta and he's going to make a pizza. If it's a Paul Stanley look at me weekend, fuck no. Which That's is exactly probably right. Which Good is probably call. what it would be. Which is probably what it would be. If it's a weekend where it's like, hey, come watch me, Paul Stanley, do my Paul Stanley things. No. Come heap praise on me. Right. Come tell me how good my paintings are. Come tell me how I changed your life. Which was Not- the exact opposite of the Gene Weekend. Exactly. Exactly. Here's a concert. Here's some of my fucking shit that you guys like. Hey, Here- come talk to me while I fucking give you away some of my shit. By exactly. the way, let's have a dinner and I'll come around. You ask me anything you want. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, that I think what we're assuming what we think is going to be. I don't really think we're that far off. But there's a piece of me that if if it wasn't ridiculously expensive, which we all know it would be, it would be interesting to see him try to phony his way through this weekend. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's Paul Stanley. <laughs> exactly. But great question, Ryan Michael Scott. I'm going to call you your real name. Thank you for the question of the week. And as I said earlier, please, we do a question of the week every week. We love them. Ask us anything. It doesn't even need to be about Kiss. You could say, hey, what's your favorite fucking Kiss doll when you were five years old? Anything. Uh, we love the questions. Chinese food. Yeah, it, that, that too. Can you walk, Mom, us you through the, walk us through the step-by-step of stool samples? How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just got a stool sample sent to me by my, my primary care doctor. How does it work? <laughs> um, one other thing, Tom. Would it work with any other member? See, I think it would work with Bruce, Tommy, and Eric. Obviously, the cost would yeah. never be the same. That would be, but I think it would be awesome. okay. I, I think, think it, it would, would be okay. Tommy right? is Tommy is extremely personal and very kind. I'll tell so you is, who so wouldn't Bruce. work with. I'll tell you who it wouldn't work with. Ace, absolutely not. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> be fucking great. That hotel's got like three pools. He has as much interest as engaging with fans. Fucking hates him. He fucking give the amount of like pain that he's under when he does these fucking things where he can barely fucking raise his head and give his crooked thumb fucking up that he gives to people when he doesn't he didn't even memory. look at us when we had no, him. He sign barely could shit. talk. He's yep. not engaging anybody. He doesn't go nope. fuck. How much nope. am I making off of this one, Laura? <laughs> Make sure everybody pays cash. But all the fucking Ace Cult members, Ace is the best, Ace, Ace. He don't give a fuck about any of you guys. <laughs> He's worse than Gene. Shut the fuck up. God bless anyway. Peter. God bless Peter, but he loves his fans. I don't know if he yeah. could do an entire weekend. I don't think event, he could do it. I think no, he's older. No. He's crankier. His right. wife is very protective, right or wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. She's like, Peter's tired. He ain't tired. Okay, enough. That's it. He's going home. You know, uh, right. I get it. So, yep. Yep. Um, Tom, where can people find us? Uh, we go to our website. That's where everything is. Shout it out loudcast.com. All of our episodes, all of our rankings, links to our Amazon store, links to our merch, links to our social media and Patreon. Everything's there. So please. And you can send us messages directly from the website. We get them in the form of an email, which is great. Speaking of emails, shout out loudcast at gmail.com. We read every one of your emails. We try to get to them all during the show, but. As you can see recently, we're trying to control our feedback. Uh, so please send us email, shout out loudcast at gmail.com and our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Please tag us. We love when people take pictures or find something. We got one of our friends on Twitter. He's always posting stuff when he goes to a record store and finds like a rare 45 or something. That stuff's awesome because we'll comment or we'll retweet. Did you say he's. He's always pulling at his pants. He's always, he's always retweeting. He's always pulling at his pants. 
He's, he's always pulling at his pants and shit. He's a funny little listener. He's a funny little guy. He's um, getting his ass kicked yeah. on the ball field. Just the other day, they were licking the kiss bats and then jagging him in the ass. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, our wonderful Patreon family, please check us out, patreon.com or the app. And as we always like to say, we're part of the wonderful Pantheon podcast network of shows. Tom, we're going to have to take that back because uh, Pantheon has let our buddies Grown Up Rock into their membership. Ew! It is sullied the Pantheon, uh, I don't know, family and the reputation. Not the them. Family. Cobras and fire. You got a bunch of fucking idiots in there now. Jay from the Hook Rocks, all these fucking <laughs> misfits. Meanwhile, we're talking about fucking putting shit in a trash bag and we're making fun of all these other guys. <laughs> it was in a test tube, Tom, in a tube. Okay. Get it right. All right, Tom. People can always DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you subscribe and watch our YouTube channel as well. You do that, that helps the show out tremendously. The big help, along with giving us one of those five star child reviews. And as a matter of fact, yes, we got our previous listener to fix his one star review, <laughs> which he complimented us and yep. then gave us one star. And we're like, what the fuck is that? And that was our buddy Eric. So Eric came back and wrote a new one and he calls this one, Hey, Chief. No, oh, no. Tom and Zeus have the best music podcast funny informative and keep my mind occupied thank you guys i just want to update my review i'm the idiot that didn't make sure five stars got selected peace eric s oh perfect yeah you're not an idiot you're a buddy we appreciate you fixing it and actually acknowledging that it was you you're the second person that's done that and both the people have come back and actually fixed it yeah if you want to help us out go to uh, apple podcast give us a five-star review Write something there and then let us know that it was you so we can give you the credit. Um, you can also go to our website, as Tom mentioned, go to our Amazon store. When you shop there, it helps us out and then go to our merch. So we're still with Amazon. We had some quirks there before. We finally fixed it. So if you go on our website, shout it out loudcast.com, shout it out loudcast.com. You go to our merch, you click the link there, and it should have our T-shirts there. Um, we have all the ones up there from uh, previously, and then we're going to slowly start adding some new designs. Hopefully, Amazon doesn't fuck up again, and therefore, we'd have to change. But for now, it's there. Order them. Uh, we appreciate it. And when you do order your sh- our, your uh, Shout Out Loudcast merch, take a photo of you in it someplace, doing something. Go to a concert wearing it. Go to your fucking friend's wedding wearing a Shout It Out Loudcast t-shirt. Yes. We'll make sure we put it on our website. Just let us know. And uh, finally, I'd like to remind everybody the email, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com. And feel free to email us anytime with any of your thoughts. Uh, Tom, what we'd like to do is end on famous last words. Do you have any? Oh, unfortunately, I do. Okay. Listen to this poetry. Wherever you are, that's where I'm going to be. Oh, no matter how far, you'll never be that far for me. Tom. I got a reputation. People know who I am. Rules are made to be broken. Can't kill what you don't understand. Wonderful. Kiss Army Loudcasters. Tom, thank you. Guys, you're the best. Love you. Patreon people, we love you, everybody. Zeus, as always, my friend. Thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout.
Tom, what we like to do from time to time is read some of the funny spam emails that we get. Oh, these are fucking great. This one has got <laughs> the address is a smiley face, the word ass, and then fire emoji. <laughs> The title says, fuck me from behind while you play tongue with my ass. I want your cock now. <laughs> Shout it out loud, Cass. I'm sent you my last naked video. I want you in my bed now. And there's a pickle with an apricot showing. I pickled it. <laughs> Let's make it cozy. Shout it out loud, Cass. I'm so fucking horny. My pussy is so hot. Waiting for you with my legs open. <laughs> Should I click the video? What do you think? Oh, 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 God. All right. Wait, I have another one here. This is another good one here, too. Um, This address has a heart. <laughs> I can't even get through these. <laughs> it says, fuck teen. <laughs> What? Oh, God, I gotta get myself together. Here. The emojis would have killed me. Want to have sex tonight? <laughs> I have a feeling Daryl Albert is gonna cut this audio hair and turn into something. Fuck horny Latin girls <laughs> <laughs> near you. Let's meet. I'm so fucking horny waiting for you with my legs open. Text me and let's have fun tonight. <laughs> There's fucking I'm, eggplant I'm, emojis, I'm, splashes. I'm crying right now. All right. I got one. And we had a lot of these that I, but I just saved one of them. It's on the similar, it must be from the same fucking part okay. of the, of the, Eastern Europe uh, block here. What? This one is fuck Ukrainian. <laughs> Horny Ukrainian <laughs> teens are looking for sex near you. I think they're looking for shelter from the bombs hitting them, but apparently they're looking for sex. What? Oh. Oh, just the same old teens are looking for sex near you. Please fuck me tonight. Text me and let's meet to fuck. Fuck for free. No, I'm going to finish up with this one. It's got nothing to do with sex. And the reason it's so funny is because we just read those three. And then we got this one. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> I'm looking to order some forklift mounts. <laughs> Here are the specifications. Please let me know the pickup quote for ten, <laughs> for ten forklift mount drum grabs and how soon you can get them. Oh, 